Good evening. I'd like to call the City Council meeting of the City of San Bruno for April 28th to order. I'd like to begin by thanking the San Bruno Garden Club for the floral arrangement they've presented for this evening's meeting. If we could have roll call, please. Council Member O'Connell. Here. Vice Mayor Ruane. Here. Mayor Franzella. Here. Council Member Medina. Here. Council Member Ibera. Here. If I could ask Vice Mayor Ruane to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, announcements this Saturday is our annual Operation Clean Sweep, which will begin at 9 o'clock at San Bruno City Park. Volunteers are encouraged to register online through the city's website. And Irene, did you wish to add anything? Uh, thank you. I just hope people got their focus. And on the back is our new little logo with San Bruno, California, be a love bug, not a litter bug. And it has more information about the Operation Clean Sweep. So I hope to see you all there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. There are no presentations this evening. Uh, review of agenda, I'd like to pull item 11, the Senior Advisory Board uh, annual report to follow the public hearing, uh, which is uh, following item 8. Uh, no other changes. Approval of minutes. The minutes will stand approved as submitted. Unless there's any changes or corrections. Any changes or corrections? No. Hearing none, the minutes will stand approved. Item 7, consent calendar. All items are considered routine or implemented in earlier council action may be enacted by one motion. There'll be no separate discussion unless requested by council member, citizen, or staff. Uh, staff has requested that item seven uh, be pulled and they'll provide an oral uh, update on that. 7F. Excuse me, <laughs> seven F. Okay. Uh, any other items to be pulled or action from council? Move to approve. Second. Motion and second. In discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Item uh, 7F, adopt resolution pledging net revenue sufficient to fund payments for loans received through Clean Water State Revolving Fund for various water quality projects. Honorable yeah. Mayor, Council Member, good, uh, good evening. Based on your uh, direction and uh, the city manager direction uh, going, uh, being very aggressive uh, in our uh, intent to bring uh, federal available funding uh, under uh, the Recovery and Reinvestment Act uh, approved uh, uh, by uh, Congress this year. During uh, your uh, March meeting, you approved and uh, uh, for uh, the city manager to apply for wastewater and uh, um, and uh, storm related project uh, to apply for grant or uh, low interest uh, loan uh, to the Water Resource Control Board. The department uh, uh, in our process for applying uh, for this uh, loan, the department uh, learned more about uh, the requirement and uh, the application process. Based on our available information at this time, uh, it is uh, very possible that uh, for, uh, commun uh, for uh, communities with a healthy financial situation uh, will not be available, uh, will grant will not be available, but uh, low interest rate, 1%, uh, probably uh, will be available for uh, funding. Uh, is uh, the department really has no available information how successful the city will be uh, bringing uh, at this time those federal uh, funding uh, back to the city, uh, but uh, uh, is our intent to still uh, be aggressive uh, and applying uh, uh, for uh, those uh, grants. How I uh, indicated before, as part of the application process, the department uh, uh, learned uh, that beside uh, the resolution to uh, approve the reimbursement of uh, those uh, funds to the Water uh, Resource Control Board, 
is one of the requirement is also to uh, dedicate uh, specific revenue from uh, the enterprise fund to guarantee the reimbursement of uh, uh, those uh, uh, of uh, those funds in order for us to recommend for your consideration this resolution which basically the intent of this resolution is to dedicate specific enterprise fund to uh, for uh, that loan uh, payment the city needs additional legal and uh, financial uh, follow-up work um, our legal department and finance department uh, uh, and including uh, the city manager did not feel comfortable with uh, uh, the work uh, done by us so far uh, to make the recommendation for you to pass that resolution at this time. Will be our intent uh, to uh, follow up with further uh, work on uh, uh, debt capacity and other uh, legal requirements to meet uh, the loan uh, repayment uh, expectation of the Water Resource Board and after those additional uh, work uh, will be our intent to come back uh, and to uh, make further recommendations for your consideration. Hopefully at uh, our uh, next uh, council meeting or certainly as soon as uh, possible. I would like uh, also to emphasize that um, is uh, our success rate to, uh, to be able to um, be granted this uh, low interest rate is very low or uh, I don't want to uh, um, represent for you that uh, our comfort level is very high uh, in our success rate for uh, even uh, for this uh, low, in low interest uh, loan. But in uh, looking <coughs> at in a uh, longer term, not knowing uh, this whole uh, stimulus uh, funding process is a evolving learning process for those agencies who administer those funds and certainly a learning process for all of us also and uh, is uh, is very uncertain even if in our uh, at uh, this first tier uh, funding the city will not be successful uh, securing any of those uh, uh, low interest uh, loans. Maybe another uh, tier uh, two will come and additional federal funding will be, uh, come available. Also, uh, as uh, you know, is uh, a, um, the Water Reinvestment Act was already passed by the House and uh, waiting for uh, Senate uh, action, and if not, uh, as a result of this additional uh, stimulus funding, but maybe uh, additional uh, more federal investment uh, in uh, water, uh, how I indicated under that Water Investment Act, will become more funding available, and uh, the city can be successful will be uh, maybe more successful uh, in the near future also being able to uh, bring more federal uh, dollar uh, back to the city knowing uh, how critical uh, uh, our need is for infrastructure uh, in uh, investment. As you recall, as part of our recommendation for uh, the rate study for, uh, inclu for uh, wastewater and uh, uh, water, was part of uh, the recommended strategy to use uh, debt financing uh, as one of the strategy to uh, maximize our capability to improve uh, our uh, infrastructures. For those reasons, even if uh, our um, invested uh, work now seems uh, unreasonable uh, that this federal expectation at this time 
or uh, very high and to meet uh, the city needs to do l uh, lots of extra work uh, in uh, legal and uh, financial area but in long term uh, will be uh, investment worthwhile uh, that uh, those uh, uh, um, results and the process, what, which process the city is going through now, will be uh, able to be utilized uh, <coughs> later on uh, for additional federal funding or as part of our own strategy uh, under uh, the rate uh, proposal. In, uh, is will be our intent. That's the reason why this item uh, uh, was pulled today and will be our intent to come back uh, uh, with further recommendation at uh, your next meeting or soon after. Thank you. Any questions from Council? Okay. Thank you very much. Item 8, public hearings. Hold public <coughs> hearing. Wave first reading. Introduce an ordinance adding new chapter 6.51, Dangerous Fireworks to Title VI, Public Peace, Morals, and Welfare to the San Bruno Municipal Code. City Attorney. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll make this brief as I gave a full report to the City Council during our last meeting. And so tonight I'm bringing forward the ordinance uh, proposed chapter um, 651 addressing dangerous fireworks in conformance with your direction. In short, the ordinance would do three things. Number one, uh, pursuant to SB 839, uh, the city would be able to issue administrative citations for what was previously uh, a misdemeanor violation under state law, and that is possession of dangerous fireworks, 25 pounds or less. Secondly, um, the the ordinance would make it a city violation to sell, use, or discharge dangerous fireworks. And third, the city would allow for a city-regulated public display of dangerous fireworks under certain limited conditions, which would include uh, the requirement of a permit approved by the city manager, um, 90 days uh, time frame pr uh, for the application. The city manager would be uh, able to promulgate reasonable rules pertaining to the permit application. The event would only be for those that are accessible to the public as a whole. In, in other words, we're contemplating a community, community event, no block parties. The police and fire uh, chiefs would need to establish that the character and the location of the event is such that it would not create, in their opinion, a fire danger or endanger any person or property. And only a state licensed a pyrotechnical operator would be permitted to set off the fireworks. It would also be a permit fee associated with the permit in order to reimburse the city for its costs. Um, I do have one change to the ordinance, which is just a minor one, uh, on section 6.51030F, where I have the city manager may deny an application. I should have put shall, so I'd like to change that uh, if certain conditions are not met. And also uh, associated with this ordinance is a resolution setting the fines in the amounts that the city council uh, previously directed. This time, is there are there any questions from the city? Any council? questions of the city attorney? No. Uh, to the chair, just was going to say uh, I think you tightened up the language that we discussed at the last meeting, and I appreciate it. Okay, this is a public hearing. Are there any members of the public wanting to address the city council regarding this proposed ordinance? Seeing none, uh, once the public hearing is closed, you'll be precluded from speaking on this item. And is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Council discussion? Make a Council motion. Action? Wave the first reading. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Go ahead and introduce the ordinance for adoption. Please. The ordinance has been introduced. Roll call, please. Councilmember Medina? Aye. Councilmember Ibera? Aye. Councilmember O'Connell? Aye. Vice Mayor Ruane? Aye. Mayor Franzella? Aye. And now we have a resolution that needs to be adopted. Go ahead and uh, introduce we'll the move for introduction of the resolution. Roll call, please. Councilmember Medina? Aye. Councilmember Ibera? Aye. Councilmember O'Connell? Aye. Vice Mayor Ruane? Aye. Mayor Franzella? Aye. Now we'll move to item 11, reports of commission boards and committees, and we'll receive the annual report from the senior advisory board. Yeah, right there is fine. Thank you. Thanks. 
My name is Dorothy Carmichael, and I'm representing the San Bruno Seniors Citizens Advisory Board. And as you can see, there are some pictures over here to go with my talk this evening. The object and purpose of the board is to contribute educational, recreation, literary, artistic, and social activities for citizens age 50 and over so that they can experience a better quality of life. The board approves the senior center programs and activities with staff volunteers implementing such programs and activities. The board oversees and coordinates programs and activities within the center and provides a communication link between the community and the governing body and staff. We receive staff reports and graphs of program participation and lunch participation, minutes from committees and suggestions from citizens. We act on new programs or changes to existing programs. At least one member of the board is a member of each committee. Special projects accomplished in 2008 and 2009 were to repair the senior center roof, <laughs> kitchen wall repair and completion of a full year of on-site cooking for the nutrition program, repair and paint the facility, and replace the partitions in the multi-purpose room which we are enjoying right now. They, these were major tasks as the center had to be closed for one week to accomplish all these things. Also a high-speed duplicator was purchased with non-general fund sources and 25 new tables purchased for the multi-purpose room from the non-general fund sources. We had two new fun, some uh, new fundraisers, a silent auction at the happy hour, a hoedown, and a revival of the artist's musical show and dance, and this was very successful and a lot of fun. New community events, there was a veterans recognition event with El Cristo <coughs> students, small toy collection for the Pacifica military mom so that the soldier station in the Middle East can distribute them to the children. And this uh, came about from a uh, suggestion in our suggestion box. Oh, nice. uh, new classes and services, eyeglass <coughs> repair in hearing and cleaning, stepping strong walking and fitness group, classes on the internet. 2009, 2010 goals and objectives replace the 21 passenger van to make programs and services easily accessible to San Bruno seniors residents. Raise funds to help pay for this. Purchase a new color copier for administrative work. General new revenue by, uh, generate new revenue by organizing additional fundraising events. Work with the department to acquire an electric signboard. Replace speakers in the multi-purpose room. Members of the board are personally involved in the workings of the Senior Center and Nutrition Program as volunteers, thus saving the city many dollars. Citizens can come to us with questions, and if we don't have the answers, we get them. We are a hands-on board. I feel comfortable knowing that a board and staff that care are monitoring the Senior Center programs and activity. On a personal note, I came to the Senior Center in 1994 after being downsized from my job and started with the walking program. I was 58 and thought I was so smart and fit, but the 70-year-olds proved me wrong and I thought they would have to carry me back. <laughs> it was scary when I started my new life and I didn't think I would know anyone, but I felt welcomed here and started to make new friends. I attended the computer club and became involved in um, and uh, did their newsletter for five years and also held office. My husband who had Parkinson's disease enjoyed playing bocce ball and there were only four guys out there playing but now there are three leagues each week and I'm also playing myself. About two, seven years ago I started escorting day trips. I learned to play bridge and that has opened a new whole, whole <coughs> new world to me. I could go on and on but feel that this center is not a place to come to after you retire to sit back and let people wait on you, but a place where we come to become alive, learn and serve. Volunteering is hard work and sacrificial, and I'm sure we all have more stories to tell as to the benefits we have received in giving back to our community. Thank you. Very good. Do Dorothy, thank you and for your report and 
all of the time that your advisory board members give. And, you know, it's been said a thousand times, but this center wouldn't be the center it is without the volunteers and the, and the staff working together to just make it such a wonderful place. Uh, there's no place I can go in town without somebody stopping me and thanking me as if I did it myself <laughs> for the senior center. But it, it is really due to the volunteers and your, you folks really do a great job. And it's a wonderful place. Thank you. Uh, item nine, public comments for items not on the agenda. It's the council's matter to raise, uh, to refer matters raised in this forum to staff for investigation and or action where appropriate. The Brown Act prohibits the council from discussing or acting upon any matter not agendized pursuant to state law. Is there anyone wishing to address the council on an item not on the agenda? Okay, we'll move on to item 10, conduct of business. A, received quarterly financial report as of March 31st, 2009 for the 2008-09 General Fund, Special Revenues Fund, Enterprise Fund, and Capital Improvement Budget. And Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, um, the City Council just spent uh, the, the past hour and a half at a study session uh, reviewing uh, a recommendation from the City Manager for an outline for the 09-10 uh, budget. Uh, what I'd like to do now is to uh, review with the Council uh, where we are with the current 08-09 budget, where we're three quarters of the way through the year, and uh, the problems um, for the budget for next year, uh, in many ways, the seeds of the problem really came about in, in 08 09, and the council has already had to take decisive action uh, budget wise in the current year that actually is setting the foundation for, for getting through next year. The economic crisis. Um, Sometimes I'm stunned by the, by the fact it seems like the economic crisis has been going on for uh, four or five years now, but the real uh, impact uh, for for the city and, and, and much of the financial crisis uh, really uh, percolated and really began during 08, 09 and sep August, September is really perceived as the beginning of the, of the recession. Um, and uh, the impacts um, have been, as, as we've discussed and just briefly review again, um, in anticipation that property tax revenues, while they will not dr drop um, dramatically uh, over a short period of time, that uh, the assessed values are declining, foreclosures, uh, foreclosures are up, and that's going to have an impact on, on, uh, on our general fund property tax revenue. Uh, sales tax is an area where we've already experienced uh, downturns in, in uh, adopting the current year's budget. There was a reduction in sales tax estimate from what we received and what the budget was last year. Uh, the Council's already taken action to reduce the budget this year already uh, for sales tax uh, in anticipation of further declines. Uh, the City experienced in, in the current year uh, the Lehman Brothers bankruptcy impact and nearly a $700,000, a little over a $700,000 impact on our general fund uh, in the current year. And, and finally, after a, a period of many months of, of increase and actually sort of a robust period uh, for our TOT and the ho hotel tax, that has leveled off and we've la actually experienced four consecutive months now of decline in a month compared to the same month uh, last year. Uh, the council, as, as I mentioned, um, through a budget amendment that was approved uh, back in January, uh, ha has actually reduced anticipated general fund revenues in three areas. Uh, sales tax was reduced by $300,000. Our use of money and property, which is really our interest earnings, uh, was reduced by 743,000, and actually our departmental revenue 
for the community development department for our planning and building fees was actually reduced in, in virtually in half uh, based on the lower uh, business activity that, that we, we've been experiencing. So the council has already taken action and when you're looking at uh, the uh, performance of the budget so far this year on the next couple of charts that I'm going to be showing, we have already adjusted the budget, the revenue uh, for these amounts that, that I, I've just indicated were reflected in, in an earlier budget amendment. Uh, again, just to remind the council that there was decisive action taken very quickly this year to resolve the gap between the, the, the revenues and expenses and the city manager proposed and the city council reviewed strategies uh, responding to the um, economic crisis. Uh, hiring freeze was imposed uh, around mid-year. Uh, there, there was the uh, de definitive uh, anticipation of salary savings for additional vacant positions. Uh, contract services were, were reduced. Uh, supplies and equipment costs were uh, deferred or, or reduced and there was a compensation contingency uh, in the current uh, year's budget that was actually eliminated based on the council direction that compensation, uh, employee compensation would, would not be uh, increased in the current year and, and uh, as you know there was there's further co conversation about uh, employee compensation in, into the future. Uh, there was also, um, in fact, use of one-time, uh, not, not, re, uh, not reserves, but one-time revenue uh, using pass-through money from the RDA and uh, an ERAF refund in order to balance the budget and to um, meet the deficit of $1.4 million. So that's the background of the budget uh, that uh, would be looking at. Um, again, the, the revenues for general government um, include uh, primarily, this is all of the taxes are, are, are in the general fund. Uh, I mentioned property tax. Uh, you see that sales tax uh, so far is 64% of the budget. Uh, the re and if you look back at last year, it was actually 64%, but the amount of revenue that we received is lower. The reason the percent stayed the same is that the budget was reduced. As, as I mentioned, it's been reduced by $600,000, so the math, the math just happened to work out that it was exactly 64% uh, both years, but uh, sales tax revenue is definitely down compared to last year. Um, again, uh, you see use of, use of money in property while it's at 78%, and again, the benchmark for three quarters of the year should be 75%. This is. Uh, this is again an area where uh, the budget has been reduced um, by the $743,000, leaving the uh, budget at, at $1.1 million. Um, recoveries and, um, well, that, that was um, uh, really what I wanted to co comment on, on the general revenues and would respond to any questions that you have. Um, in departmental revenues, uh, comments on just a couple of lines. Uh, you see the fire, fire revenues are at 156 uh, percent, obviously an awfully high number. Uh, that is primarily because of revenues that we receive from the um, Office of Emergency Services for uh, refund or reimbursement of uh, $260,000 in overtime that the city needed to expend in, in spending in sending strike force personnel to California wildfires last summer. So that was our obligation and the OES has an obligation to pay us back. That doesn't go back into the overtime fund it, it, or in, into the overtime light item. It goes back into revenue. So that's $260,000. I checked the balance of the um, fire revenues for the most part. That's based on the issuance of uh, permits and inspections and looking at uh, the revenue there, uh, it is actually up slightly uh, through three quarters of this year compared to the full year last year. So fire is being aggressive in, in actually um, getting that revenue. Yes, Mayor? I, I just had a question. If, if the revenue, if we, the expenses made for overtime and we're being reimbursed for overtime, why isn't the reimbursement 
going against the overtime? Why isn't it being applied to overtime? Why does it go into general fund? Because then you're not getting a true picture in your financials. You're going to say at the end of the year we spent, you know, this was the overtime cost. Well, no, it wasn't because you were reimbursed. It's the best answer I have is our auditors don't like us to net it out like, like that. They, the, the, the auditors have directed us to put it into revenues. And so that's, and I mean, the best we're attempting to do is we're showing it as fire revenue um, and earmarking it as fire revenue, but um, what, what you're describing, we, we would really be netting, we'd, we'd have an expense and then we'd add a revenue to an expense line item and our auditors have suggested that we not do that. Uh, through the chair, uh, I, just to pay, uh, add to that, there was a citizen that asked in regards to overtime hours, uh, certain levels and what have you. And this was something that I don't think the resident received as a footnote, if you want to call it that, that the, of the overtime hours that were reported, we're talking about 260 plus thousand dollars of that was for strike force, which was reimbursed back to the city. So really, when you see, saw those numbers, they weren't all for firefighter overtime within the city of San Bruno. They were also, if I'm not mistaken, they were also for the strike force teams that went out through California and fought fires, which now we're finally getting reimbursed. So I see what the mayor is saying, because honestly, when you look at it, when we're reporting that, really it's skewed of what that person is really gaining in overtime from his, his or her service here to San Bruno. I mean, it almost, it, it, and I guess, you know, the auditors certainly know better than I, because I only had a few college accounting courses, but you know, when, when you, if you spend money on advertising and you get a reimbursement on advertising, you apply that reimbursement to advertising and it, it nets your advertising expense. And clearly, you've, they might not like you to net it, but you've netted it. I mean, you got a reimbursement of $268,000 from the state of California for that overtime expense that basically we're just ignoring and we're taking in the revenue. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'll be glad. Our, our auditors were here last week, and they're going to be back again. I, I, I'll gladly pursue it further with them. Text and me when they're there, and I'll come question. Them. <laughs> <laughs> Bring your accounting book under right. your arm, and uh, um, it's a little tattered, but you know. Through I, I mean, I was because I, I will point out on the redevelopment agency. There's the redevelopment agency revenue and expense looks vastly different than it did last year in, in what I'm reporting to you. And it's for the exact same, same reason. We were um, netting revenues when it came to the payment of, of pass-through to uh, taxing agencies, which seemed very logical to me. But again, our auditors asked us to take it as an expense. And so again, it, it, it skews it. And, and, and I've um, I've capitulated to, to that request, but that's not to say that it can't be further addressed, and uh, we can look into that and, and see if we can do okay. it differently. Through, through the chair, how do you, how does the state know how much to pay you back? Do you invoice the state? The, the state is paying us back based on invoices and, and a calculation that we need to provide to OES. Uh, with time and everything for all right. the personnel that are away. So just to make it clear in my mind, you invoice the state for an expense that we performed on their behalf, and they're reimbursing us based on that invoice. Correct. They're, they're okay. Then I totally agree with the mayor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's how you do it in yeah. business. <laughs> right. Yeah, it seems weird. We would be happy to provide additional You need to text us all next week when all they're here? Us. We'll me? come go. text us all when the we'll auditors are here. We're, we're, we'll come talk to we're, them. We're, <laughs> we, would, we would be happy to provide some additional explanation to the city council. The, the reimbursement that the city receives is for the service that was provided. It's based on the actual time that was spent. It's also based on the um, uh, mileage, uh, uh, according to a formula. We, we send an apparatus as well. Our people don't go just by themselves. So the reimbursement is based both upon the invoice as well as, I believe, on, on some formula that the state uses to evaluate the uh, appropriate cost 
to the agency. So, but I mean, it, uh, it, again, and I don't, it, it doesn't do it make any difference to dwell on this, but if you're billing them, you're billing them for man hours that you've expended. A portion of that's man hours, and, and if the whole 268 isn't for man hours and overtime, it shouldn't go to that. Part should go to the general fund, but if you're taking the time to break it down, it would seem that accounting principles say, you know, you expended it and you took it in as income, they should cross and net each other out. Through the chair. Councilman O'Connell. Uh, thank you. I have a question too. On the sh list that we gave uh, the gentleman who asked for it for the overtime per person and the fire department, was that strike force overtime reflected in the overtime that was listed? Because if that was so, then that also is mm -hmm. unbalanced and right. not a, a yearly occurrence. The information request related to compensation paid to our employees and all of the compensation paid to the employees, no matter if the overtime was for overtime in the city of San Bruno or overtime um, in uh, mutual aid or in a strike force, it, it reflected the total compensation paid to an employee. Okay, so. Well, and it, but that, that in and of itself creates a problem, okay? You're, you're being asked how much overtime, uh, it's not painting a clear picture. You spent overtime of, let's just use that it was all 268, none of it was apparatus, but you were mandated by the state of California to spend over a quarter of a million dollars of this community's money outside of the city and yet when you report to a citizen, we report that we spent it all. And, and we don't tell them th there's no explanation anywhere and now there's not going to even be anything in the financials because the auditors are telling us not to do it that way. It doesn't make sense. You know, it's not a clear picture. I'm sure Mr. Barry L.A. with his Freedom of Information Act and his request wanted to know how much employees were making on overtime. Were they making it here? I, I think uh, he would understand that 268,000 of it was mandated by the state and was to fight wildfires is totally different than how much was spent here. Um, and I think it's real important that if we have to report it that way in the financial statements that somehow there it be footnoted or we add a page after the auditors leave and say, look, the <laughs> auditors said do it this way, but here's the real truth. And that the p picture be clear to the citizenry. Uh, to the chair, and I don't want to dwell on it either, but I do want something to change. Uh, after you speak to the auditor, you text us or whatever you need to do, because I think it it misrepresents honestly what that information was that was given out, and not not that anybody was trying to, but it doesn't give an accurate picture. As I said, it's skewed, and I think it's important when in these challenging times that citizens are asking these questions that they be given a full, transparent picture so that they know exactly what it is costing and where the money is coming from. Proceed. <laughs> no more, no more, more clear. No more, <laughs> it shall be. Um, uh, the next slide um, shows uh, expenditures, uh, total expenditures for, for the ge general fund through the third quarter uh, at 76% which again is just slightly above the, um, uh, the, the benchmark of 75. Um, I, I, um, you've already concluded and I will just reiterate that the fire department expense is at 80% uh, in part because of the overtime expenditure for uh, the wildland fires. So that, that is shown there and we will work towards uh, reflecting that uh, differently. Um, just moving on to the redevelopment agency again this is this is the um, uh, significant accounting change that that we're experiencing in in this current year and again this was the new auditors and they pointed this out to us uh, last year and and we're, we're we were implementing it this year um, based on the council comments may um, run this by them again um, <laughs> and just very very briefly again what is what is happening is um, San Bruno gets 100% of the tax increment that is due uh, for the redevelopment agency, but immediately the redevelopment agency is turning around and nearly 40% of what we get 
goes to other taxing agencies, uh, San Bruno Park uh, Elementary District, the high school district, the college district, the mosquito abatement district. Uh, there's 11 agencies that share, share in this. What I have been doing since the agency was formed was I have, re I have been reducing those payments have come out of the revenue that we get for tax increment so that, again, sort of the true picture of the tax in increment is presented. The uh, auditors have requested that I stop doing that, that I show that as an expense rather than a reduction in revenue. And um, so that is why the, the numbers are different for the redevelopment agency. <laughs> and I'll give them that one. You can track it as long as you spell it out and you show where the expense was. That's trackable. But just taking the money for overtime and losing it in revenue is exactly what happens. It's just lost. There's no way you could pick up that financial statement and go through and determine that that was an <coughs> offset on overtime that you were billed. Where you could, in redevelopment, see that, okay, here's this is actually all of the revenue received. You actually get a check or a transfer into your account for that am amount of money, and here are the monies you expended or by law were required to pay out to these other agencies. I mean, you can follow that. That makes sense. The other one uh, is backwards. Not to dwell on it, but... <laughs> Not to dwell on it, though. <laughs> um. Uh, the, the only other co comment I, w I was planning on ma making was really as it relates to, to the enterprise funds, the, the um, I'm going to cut it really short now. <laughs> City manager keeps saying I have to, but no more, um, is uh, just looking at the enterprise prize accounts, uh, generally the revenues and expenses are, are what we would perceive as be being on target. Wanted to point point out there is a low revenue number on the um, stormwater enterprise account. Um, that is that is generally a fund that the the revenues are um, very closely generally matched to the expenditures. There's 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 not um, there's very little excess capacity in the stormwater uh, fund. It it is um, impacted this year more because it's more visible. Um, all of the enterprise accounts took a hit uh, from the Lehman Brothers uh, interest earnings. Uh, the general fund took half of the loss. The, enter the other funds took the other half of the loss. So it is visible in the stormwater fund because the overall fund is smaller than, that, than the others. So that's, that's an explanation why the stormwater fund um, appears lower. Um, with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions the council has. Any questions of staff? Okay. Thank you for your report. Uh, look forward to your conversation. <laughs> uh, item B, adopt resolution approving third quarter budget amendment for the 2008-09 general fund, special revenue funds, enterprise fund, and capital improvement budget. This is a resolution uh, putting into place those items that we've already done. It's just formalizing it into a budget. Uh, you need any, any questions of staff or action from council? The chair, I'd like to introduce the resolution for adoption. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Ruane. Aye. Council Member Medina. Aye. Council Member Ibera. Aye. Council Member O'Connell. Aye. Mayor Franzella. Aye. Item C, adopt resolution establishing and implementing identity theft prevention program in accordance with section 114 of the Fair and Accurate Credit Transactions Act of 2003. Mr. Leary. Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, um, fraud attempted or committed using identification or identifying information of another person without their authority is defined as identity th theft. Since 2003, the Federal Trade Commission has required financial institutions and some other creditors to actively work to protect customers from identity theft. These regulations have now been extended to all creditors with accounts that are designed to permit multiple payments over a period of time and other accounts where a reasonable risk of identity theft exists. A typical example of such a covered account 
really is the city of San Bruno's utility accounts for water, wastewater, and garbage, and for our cable television customers, where customer information is retained and services provided in exchange for payments over a period of time. Red flags or warnings or warning signs or activities uh, that a possible identity theft issue could be uh, at hand. Uh, the following red flags are identified as raising the suspicion or potentially raising the suspicion of finance or cable personnel, uh, such things as a report by a credit agency of theft of, of, of information, uh, suspicious documents, uh, if um, uh, an altered driver's license is brought in and presented to, to the city when an account is, is open would be a, an example of a suspicious uh, document. Or if a customer themselves notify finance or cable that um, their bills are not being received uh, regularly or that there's unauthorized charges to an account, those would all be red flags to us that there could be potential of identity theft. Um, again, the Federal Trade Commission is requiring us and similar um, organizations to develop a policy to work towards the prevention of identity theft. And that's what you have before you is, a, is, is our uh, proposed policy for, for identity theft. And, this, and the policy spells out actions that the city would take in responding to these red flags. Um, in addition to the, the proposed um, confirmation and checking uh, of identity and responses that are laid out in the, in the proposed uh, policy, um, it is a fact that, that credit agencies have now established programs per permitting someone like the city to perform a positive identification check on, new all on all new applicants for city utility or cable, t cable television services. Uh, the program, as offered by uh, Equifax as an example, requires an initial setup fee and a charge uh, per transaction uh, that would be uh, applied to each new, new account. Uh, in order to ensure that the city is doing everything it can to ensure that there's not identity theft, we're actually recommending uh, that the city subscribe to this service and do this positive ID check by providing a social security number to a, a credit agency that we would then get return information verifying that there is not a uh, flag or a warning on that particular individual's um, uh, credit, credit account. Uh, we open about 200 new accounts per, per month, um, and uh, that would be a $300 charge total if we were doing that. Uh, it's not necessary in order to implement the policy. We think that it would be prudent to, to do such a thing. Uh, we, in fact, have many people that come in that are not able to furnish a valid driver's license or their identification is somewhat suspect. Um, to be quite frank, we have not been notified of any instances of identity theft for our accounts. I think it's probably um, more uh, prevalent in opening a Macy's account or opening uh, or getting a credit card than it is for a, for a city uh, account. Uh, but again, it would be our recommendation that we go forward with this uh, concrete and positive act to further protect our customers and to make sure that, that, um, that there is not a, um, uh, an instance of um, identity theft. Uh, so with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions the council has about the program or the proposed policy. Any questions to staff? Action from council? I'll introduce the resolution. Roll call, please. Councilmember Ibera. Aye. Councilmember O'Connell. Aye. Councilmember Medina. Aye. Vice Mayor Ruane. Aye. Mayor Franzella. Aye. Item D, receive report and provide direction on proposed ordinance temporarily suspending portion of tax liability for airport parking facilities. Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, um, as, as we nor normally do prior to an ordinance coming before the Council, 
uh, we uh, present a draft or the, or the ordinance to the council to receive their direction in actually um, putting the ordinance uh, to the council for the, the public hearing and the first reading. In this instance, uh, Sky Park, um, which has had um, actual uh, reduction um, in the airport parking rate uh, since 2007, uh, has submitted a request uh, that the current rate of 5.5% uh, be continued through calendar year 2009 with an automatic um, uh, restoration of the rate uh, January 1st of 2010 uh, to the 8% rate uh, that was the initial rate for, for this, um, um, for, for the airport parking tax. Uh, the company uh, or the airport in general and the company specifically uh, is continuing to feel uh, the impact of the um, of of the economy, uh, the fewer number of passengers uh, going through San Francisco Airport and beginning actually their their travel from San Francisco, uh, which is the potential pool of uh, of people using uh, Sky Park uh, for a period of time. And in in 08, uh, the company reports that there was actual increases in traffic, uh, but it really uh, about this time that I was talking about the general economy dropping uh, the last couple of quarters of last year and so far the, the first quarter of 2009 <coughs> here have seen um, significant drop-offs um, both in the, in the traffic, um, but I did have an opportunity to look at the financial statements and I, I think the, the, the difference between revenue and expense um, has uh, suffered uh, over this period. So the company is requesting um, continuation of the 5.5% uh, through uh, 2009. Uh, Joe Galligan is, is, is here and I'm sure he or I could answer any questions that the council might have about this. Any questions of council or direction from council to bring forward, forward an ordinance that would continue the same taxing situation you have currently. You need that in the form uh, of a we motion. We should probably have a motion, so. Uh, yeah, through the chair, I'd like to bring, uh, uh, make a motion to bring forward a new ordinance, uh, continuing ordinance, uh, temporarily suspending the portion of tax liability as it is now. Second. second. Motion and a second. In discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, item 12, <coughs> comments from council members? Hearing none, uh, the City Council will be going into closed session. The City Manager and Human Resources Director request a closed session pursuant to California Government Code Section 4957.6 regarding direction for labor negotiations for the San Bruno Professional Firefighters Association, Public Safety Mid-Management Bargaining Unit, Miscellaneous Group Mid-Management Bargaining Unit, San Bruno Police Bargaining Unit, and San Bruno Management Employees Association. From there, they'll be, uh, we'll just be giving uh, staff direction. There'll be no action item. The City Council will adjourn to the next regular City Council meeting to be held on May 12, 2009 at 7 o'clock p.m. here at the San Bruno Senior Center. Thank you.